Now we're going to look at modern mapping and some of the technologies that are associated with our world today. Starting off with a very simple term, absolute location. The definition is that absolute location measures exact location and distance. Now, another term that we use to understand absolute location is site. So we're talking about the site, you're talking about a point or an area on the Earth's surface. So really they are basically synonymous. Now, in today's technology, we have the advantage of the GPS, the Global Positioning System, which really is a satellite navigation system that provides location and time information anywhere on the Earth. It's maintained by the United States, and currently there's around 30 operating satellites, give or take. The diagram to the lower right shows how multiple satellites are used to triangulate your position very accurately. So you can see these satellites that are shown here would be way up in space, not visible by the person, obviously. Uh, by using multiple satellites, you can get a very good and accurate point. Now, this animated image, I think I find very interesting, it shows the GPS constellation in motion with the rotating Earth. On average, uh, at least nine satellites are visible by line of sight at any given point. So you can see the Earth rotating, you can see the satellites in orbit, because you have at least nine at any given time, sometimes more, sometimes less, but it ensures good redundancy in case any of the satellites fail or if something is obstructed one way or the other. The other type of location you need to know is relative location, which basically is the location of a place relative to other human and physical features. Synonymous with the other term situation. So we talked about site with absolute location, now we talk about situation with relative location. Again, looking at the map that we've seen before in Chicago, you can see all the connections, all the railroads, all the highways leading to Chicago. Uh, also the accessibility that it has with multiple states and multiple areas. One thing to keep in mind, absolute location doesn't change. Relative location may change. That is why throughout history we've seen civilizations um, come and go, rise and fall. Now, there are two types of maps that you need to be aware of. You have your reference map, which you see here to the left, and the purpose behind a reference map is to show locations of places and geographic features. So you can see this one showing you where major cities are. You might have one that shows you where rivers are or where mountain ranges. The, basically, the idea is to show you the absolute locations. The other kind of map is a thematic map. A thematic map will tell you a theme, a story, about the degree of an attribute, the pattern of its distribution, or its movement. So we're looking at relative locations here. In this map, talking about the Washington DC metro area is the median household income by census tract. So it's telling you the relative wealth that you can see. You can see clearly in this map where you see it in green, where you have poorer neighborhoods or lower income areas. And then you can go to see where it gets darker, the red, where you can see the higher income areas. Again, the idea is to give you a theme, tell you a story. Now let's take a look at GIS, Geographic Information Systems. Because of modern computer hardware and software, we're able to store and analyze layers of spatial data. Now this is also very important, by the way. Notice I pronounced it spatial. I don't want to hear anybody pronouncing it as spatial. That drives me nuts. There is no such thing as anything spatial, it is spatial. Dealing with space and area. Look at the image to the right, and that shows you land cover. So I'll show you vegetation, show you trees, and you can see all that. Now, what if I wanted to focus on where rivers were located? Rivers, streams, any kind of body of water. I can see some major ones along these areas, but to see the smaller tributaries, much more difficult. So go to another layer of data, and here you go. So by layering the data, you get to see less noise, less mess. So I go from this to this. Now let's take a look at where the roads are. So if you want to see that as a different layer altogether. Now the power of GIS isn't just to break down between one slide or another, but to actually superimpose one on top of the other. So I can do this. So I can put it into where the rivers are and you can see a better story of actually why things are where they are. So you look at this area where you see there's very few roads. The good explanation for that, of course, is that that's a major body of water. Or where you see other ones, you can zoom that in there. 
Now, I put in the land cover behind this. Unfortunately, the image is not very good, but you get the idea that if you were to put layer on top of layer on top of layer, it tells you a more telling story than just giving you one little piece of information. You add more and more information. So roads and rivers and land cover. Now, last term we're going to use here is talking about remote sensing. If you go back to ancient world, you can only see as far as your eyes can see. Now we talk about remote sensing, a method of collecting data by instruments that are physically distant from the area of study. So you could use aircraft or radar or satellite image like this one is here. If you haven't figured out what this is showing, this is Katrina. This is 2005, the uh, hurricane that devastated New Orleans, among other places. Now we see a satellite image of New Orleans. If you take a look at this little white dot here, that's the Superdome. Now, one of the areas to focus in on, I've highlighted for you here, is the French Quarter. Now, the French settlers originally went in this area for a very good reason. If you take a look at elevation, you notice that there's a lot of places that are below sea level. Everything that you see here in the blue, okay, or the light blue. The places that you get to in the red are as high as about, you know, we're talking about 30 feet. So we're not talking about a high elevation, but certainly... If there was going to be flooding or some other issue, that would be a big benefit. I'll take a look at what happened in 2005 as a result of Hurricane Katrina. So you can see where there was great devastation and flooding that took place because of this, uh, where the levees had broken that were holding back the waters of like Punxsut Train or other areas uh, in New Orleans. You take a look, you can see where there was some minor flooding uh, all the way down to where there was more and more major flooding going up to seven to eight feet in some areas. If I was to show you another one, I don't have it to show you at this point, but if you were to see income, what do you think you would see? More than likely, the lower income areas, the lower cost land would be in places that were more likely to flood and the higher cost in other territories, like around where the French Quarter would be, would be in a nicer region. Again, common sense. Now maps may show you information, may show you data, but nothing quite hits as hard as seeing the real images yourself. So this is the Superdome before Hurricane Katrina in 2005, and this is what it looks like afterward. Well, in black and white anyway. So here it is before, and then with a lot of wind damage, and then a lot of flooding that was around it. Of course, this is the Superdome today, so it's all fixed up. Now here's another image, just showing you an aerial photograph before and after. So here's before. Here's after. You can see a clear difference with the before and after. You can even take a look at the road and see places where it has been flooded and also where it's gone to higher elevation itself where it is not as flooded. Or you take a look at this. You see this a lot of neighborhoods, a lot of cityscape, and then you can see it underwater. So this is before and this is after. Here is another view to show you the actual scope and the scale of the devastation that there was in the immediate aftermath of Katrina in 2005. Now to conclude, I'm going to show you a time-lapse video um, that shows you the impact and the power of remote sensing. So enjoy. <laughs> 